Alright so, today we're shaking things up. Instead of focusing on one whole theory today, we're doing three mini theories. Without further ado let's get in. Enna's female from the neck down? We're starting off with an ultra schizo sounding one, but once again hear me out. In this behind the scenes image of Murder Drones episode 7, we see what the model of serial designation N looks like without his coat. Without any clothes, N has the same bodily proportions ignoring the feet that V and J possess. What I'm going to say, is that during the process of Sin turning N into a disassembly drone, she tried to feminize him as a psychologically manipulative move. You can't call the design choice to give N this shape just a recycling of assets, as in episode 6 Dead End we see a corpse with this exact body type visible thus making it canon. We know she is entirely obsessed with her big brother, and so she wouldn't fancy any other female drones fancying him. So in an attempt to condition him to neither seek out a male or female partner, she purposely made him look womanly in this new body without altering his sexuality, as changing the personalities of her favorite drones is not something she's willing to do. However in this freaky move, she underestimated how amicable N was to strangers, and such he didn't feel self-conscious about his new body, in the promenade he even managed to maintain a masculine form by filling his dapper suit with padding around the waist. For why he got to have feet while his comrades didn't, Sin didn't want to go too overboard with the modifications so he wouldn't catch on to what happened to him. TLDR, Sin is a court sister confirmed. B brother N. Get on the jetty with me and consume the extra JG nose, please. Now without giving you enough time to let what I just said process in your brain. On to theory number 2. Tessa is an 18 year old midget. This is going to be the quickest one, and possibly the most sane. In episode 5 I've noticed that if you pause at the right time, you can see Tessa has boobies. Through a quick moral argument, I figured out why this would absolutely confirm she is at least 18 years of age. Glitch aren't creeps, from what we know, and if they were designing a child character they wouldn't model boobs on it. So from reason alone, we can deduce Tessa is not a child. Uzi is smaller than Tessa, and as she's confirmed to be 18 plus, there is no logical stretch here. For the in-universe reason as to why this low IQ specimen is so short, either by the abuse given to her by her parents she was underfed enough not to grow tall, or was born with the real world deformity of dwarfism, which would probably explain her large head as well. So don't you Tessimps worry, your crush on this silly little creature is perfectly innocent. That was quick. Okay now onto what is definitely the most insane chicken pot theory here. Khan. Put what in Rebecca? You heard me right, I think Khan cheated on Ori with Rebecca. In episode 2 Heartbeat, we're our show newsy user device that while initially used as a one-off joke, has some seriously questionable implications on how it could be used. The device in question appear to be a set of two circular modules two drones attached to their head, that allows one pair to take over the body of the other using a joystick. In this exact scene Uzi uses said device to take over the body of student Braden, which soon causes his head to set on fire. After this brief cutaway, we never see this device again. Well that's what Glitch would want you to believe. What if I told you that Khan had used this contraption for his own personal gain? Taking over the body of student Darren to get freaky with one of Uzi's classmates, Rebecca. Here's my defense on why this happened. 1. Khan is the most likely person to currently have this device, as this situation with Uzi and Brayden was brought up to him by the teacher, and so he would have had to confiscate it himself due to the teacher's general apathy and lack of motivation to do it himself. 2. As a skilled engineer, having constructed the three giant doors, he would have the technical knowledge to improve up on this gadget and make it so it would be easier to conceal on one's head and wouldn't set people's noggins on fire, if we assume Uzi made it first. Third, when comparing all three of David J. Dixon's voice performances, Darren sounds notably more like Khan, than Khan sounds like Frank, who has a hint of a Brooklyn accent. Please just leave the lights. Sorry? I mean, she's a little herself, but damaged? Nice. Get it now. Poor thing's defective. <laughs> Of course there are numerous instances of murder drones voice actors taking on multiple character roles, 
Liam and Kovac being two key examples. However in contrast their roles notably take a greater effort to differentiate themselves, while Darren just sounds like Con with younger mannerisms. Yeah, she has trouble fitting in. We think there might be something damaged with her programming. <laughs> so not the vibe! <laughs> I'd be all like, I don't deserve happiness. I'm serial designation N. Nice to meet you. Oh, that's where I left my excuse to be outside right now. But the warranty wasn't expired. It never existed. I believe after many years without Nori, Con was bored of living single for so long, and not finding any women his age attractive like her, needed to compensate by going for someone younger, knowing he could not just hook up with a high school girl looking like a crusty old pensioner. He snooped the mind control modules onto Darren's head while he couldn't notice so when the school bus arrived he could take over his mind and get frolicsome with his girl. Now while this is very much weird, I don't think Khan has done a Drake Chris Tyson EDP Kenny Coquitin Dr. Disrespect Dalen TV Gaming Juka, as unless a drone is explicitly shown as being a baby as with Bo, we never get confirmation on whenever a drone is underage, with all official ages being at least 18 years old. Khan likes his steaks rare, but not undercooked. Khan wanting to clank Rebecca is actually a good thing, yes. Because this whole time, he was also doing this to protect Uzi. After seeing her daughter almost get killed by disassembly drones twice in episode 1, and seeing N run off in episode 2, he was getting tired of feeling like a failure being too cowardly to protect her, and so he schemed up this plan to watch over her on the camping trip to properly understand what was happening with her and the disassembly drones. By using Darren's body as a disguise, he wouldn't have to worry about himself being destroyed as he could simply return to his own body if anything happened to him. This is why in episode 7, Khan knew about Uzi committing cannibalism, as he saw Uzi devour his vessel and was ultimately prepared to kick Solvers but without hesitation, creating the mark to railgun Uzi later used in absolute end. You might argue he heard Uzi ate people from one of the camp's survivors such as Lizzie, but can you really count on her to care enough? Can't save the world by being a freak, that is why he's our hero. Thanks for watching, next I'll either branch out by making a video pointing out various murder drones continuity errors, or do a series on how I'd write MD season 2, ciao.